Hi, Electric Earth Concerts audience, long time no see. We hope everybody's getting a little bit of summertime in their lives. And we thought we would introduce this concert, which features both of us quite a bit uh, by letting you see our faces and giving you a greeting since it's been such a long time since we've talked to you. Um, we, we have a concert for you today that we, we planned for a, as a summertime concert and it is all music that truly was inspired by birds. Um, without saying too much about it all, we have, we have several pieces that kind of travel the world. Um, and uh, each one is quite a bit different. Um, but we end with a wonderful piece that was written in Peterborough, Peterborough New Hampshire by Amy Beach and features um, the music of the hermit thrush which we thought was a wonderful way to end the concert. Um, it starts out with the piece that Laura is playing with this, our wonderful guest pianist, uh, Mimi Solomon. And um, do you want to tell them about it or, or not? Well, yeah. Anyway, um, we are right now in Maine, <clears throat> in Portland. We're in um, my backyard and it's <clears throat> 90 degrees, just like as if we were in New York City or Durham. Um, and we're really missing you all a lot and we're really missing the mountain and the beautiful New Hampshire air and all our friends. Um, I know that these recorded concerts are not really much of a substitute, but we feel like there is a whole other way that we get to listen to music and explore it when we start um, curating video concerts and I think that it can be very um, rewarding and educational and um, our musicians have had a great time doing it and we had an amazing time doing this concert that we're presenting to you today. Um, Jonathan and I were sheltering in place down at his house in Durham, North Carolina and Mimi Solomon who was to play with us up in New Hampshire actually lives in a chipmunk just ran by hello little guy anyway mm -hmm. mimi lives in chapel hill and so after all of us sheltering in place for nearly four months we thought all right we're going to create a pod and the three of us together will do this concert and rehearse it and so we actually went to mimi's house doors and windows wide open six feet apart and we rehearsed and we made music and it was like an incredible breath of fresh air it was so exciting and we were both in such great moods from doing it so anyway um this piece by Lior Navak some of you know Lior because um, my trio Oriole has played his piece Veiled Echoes a number of times and I speak about it before the performance. So um, I don't have much to say here other than it was so much fun working this up with Mimi. And um, she's just an amazing pianist. And it really felt like I felt like two added hands to her piano. It was so easy to play with her and meld everything. Um, and then before Jonathan speaks about um, the Takamitsu, I thought I would just talk a little bit about the Shrish Corday piece, which I'm also going to play on this. Um, by the way, we did this recording in Baldwin Auditorium at Duke University, which is one of the most beautiful concert halls. It was incredible. So that, too, was a real gift. And Rick Nelson, who is a good colleague of Jonathan's, did this video, and he did an artful job, as you'll see. Just beautiful camera angles, amazing sound. It was really great. Anyway, Sharish Corday is a North African composer. Um, who teaches at the College of Holy Cross. And he is very um, passionate about exploring world music. And so this piece, Tenderness of Cranes, is actually um, his take, his improvisation um, on an ancient Japanese shakuhachi melody, shakuhachi being the traditional Japanese flute played like this that's impossible to play. Um, and it's written in seven to nine parts, and it's called Tenderness of Cranes. And the original melody is supposed to evoke cranes 
and their love toward their babies and their everlasting love and bond toward each other. Cranes are one of the species that mate for life. And I just felt like what better a time and place to record a piece like this than during this kind of dystopian time when we're so far apart, but we have to take care of each other close together. Um, in this piece, you hear all these tremolos and these little bent pitches and everything, and they're supposed to evoke the cranes cooing and um, speaking to their babies and to each other. Um, and the piece kind of jumps in sections between this very beautiful modal melodic music and then just single or two notes fluctuating cooing and then some very energetic technical passage work. So it's very unpredictable, it's ever-changing, but it has this beautiful organic flow to it. And um, each player who plays it really makes it their own piece. I mean, the notes are written, but the timing and the gestures are so personal. Um, and so I just, I started working on it at the end of March in between all my online teaching and just had so much fun working it up and recording it in Baldwin. So I hope that you enjoy it. So do you want to talk about talk? Well, I think I said a little bit about the Takamitsu, um, which is the second piece on the program, um, before I, when I recorded it, so you can listen to that. But I think just generally I want to say about this concert that, that um, they really, all the pieces are truly inspired and evoking um, those wonderful winged creatures that we see and share the world with. Um, and so I think it's fun to see how each, each composer reacted to and portrays them. Um, Amy Beach, so, so Takamitsu is, was using an Emily Dickinson poem, which beautifully describes uh, a bird, an encounter with a bird. And if you, the deeper you go into that piece, the, the more you see that he really is um, relating the music that he's writing to the, to the lines of the poetry. Um, but that would take a long time to explain, so I'm not going to do that here. Um, uh, Amy Beach, who wrote the last two etudes, the last two pieces that are on the program for solo piano, actually took down the notes that she heard out of her window in New Hampshire of the hermit thrush once uh, when the hermit thrush was calling in the evening and then once when the hermit thrush was calling at dawn. Um, I guess the hermit thrush has different calls at those different times of day. So she, she did her best to, to notate the calls, and then she created a piece, and she writes in her manuscript, these are exact notations in their exact keys, and she wrote the piece, created a piece around it. And to me, they're just wonderful, haunting um, music, and you all will recognize uh, the bird when you hear it. Anyway, we miss you all. Hope everybody's staying healthy, enjoying their somewhat isolated summers, and let's hope that it's not too long before we can all be together again. Have a good July, have a good August, and take care. Bye. Bye-bye. This is such an incredible, blessed opportunity for us to be able to play number one with Mimi, who you will, at some point in the near future, I hope, hear live. She's an amazingly beautiful pianist. And um, to actually be in the same room and make music together is, like, incredible. And here we are in Baldwin, which is the most beautiful space. It has a beautiful sound of its own. Playing into it is incredible. So this piece that Mimi and I are going to play is by... Somebody who I consider a good friend, although I've never met him, Lior Navak. He lives in between Israel, between Jerusalem and Berlin. And um, you've heard Veiled Echoes when my trio has played it. So this is a piece, Three Winged Movements, which is three bird movements. And the first one is the Hawk's Glide. The second is called At the Bat's Dwelling. And the third is called Hummingbird's Gaiety. And um, Lior made a little recording that we will share with you.
just talking about himself and the music. But I wanted to say that this morning, I woke up and I opened the blinds and I looked out the window and I am not kidding you when I say that on the side of the roof, there was a baby red-tailed hawk just sitting there. And I felt like, oh my God, I have such a big responsibility now. He's here to tell me something about recording today. So um, I hope that I will do both Lior and the hawk justice and um, enjoy.
Hi, everybody. We are playing you a concert today um, themed uh, around birds. And one of my favorite bird pieces is by Takemitsu. It's called A Bird Came Down the Walk. Uh, Takemitsu wrote this towards the end of his life, maybe at the very end of his life, when he, he had gotten into the poetry of um, Emily Dickinson. He wrote several pieces that were named after and based on her poems. And, um, and so in this piece, what is being portrayed is um, she's looking out her window and seeing this bird strutting up and down her sidewalk. And she goes out and tries to feed it, and it kind of cocks its eye at her. And then at the end of the poem, instead of being jerky and like a bird on the ground, it spreads its wings and flies away like someone rowing through the air, is, is how she describes it. So. It's a wonderful combination of perky, jerky bird movement and then very flowing movement as well. Um, Takemitsu, uh, he, he, was, he was discovered by Stravinsky. He was, a, he was a young man in Japan and Stravinsky was visiting. And, um, and they, the Japanese uh, com compositional establishment had put forward what they thought were their best composers. And then at the end, somehow, Takemitsu snuck in and Stravinsky noticed him <laughs> and said, this guy's really good. And, and that kind of uh, introduced him to the Western world and, and his career uh, took off after that. I think he was ahead of his time. He was, he was a wonderful modernist colorist, but had his own very special take on that whole language. And you'll hear a lot of color in this music, a lot of different sounds coming out of the, out of the viola, which is why it's so much fun to play. So. Hope you enjoy it.